was set on removing the tumor. So I guess that's why I couldn't keep my knee. Twenty-year-old Jillian was diagnosed with bone cancer a year ago. I had that feeling of what if, but I was like, it can't be. I mean, I'm 19 years old. I'm playing college volleyball. Like, how could that have happened? Well, it's every parent's worst nightmare when you hear your child has cancer. About September of last year, of 2016, she uh, started experiencing problems in her knee. She was playing volleyball at, at college, and she was at a tournament. And so we all just assumed it was just you know, tendonitis, just over usage. I got an appointment with a orthopedic surgeon and um, they did an MRI and he thought it was a torn meniscus and it came back that I had a fractured femur and a bone cyst that he never felt that that diagnosis was right. So every two weeks he had me coming back and I would have um, x-rays to see if he could see the bone cyst on the x-ray. He ended up asking me to go have another MRI and that's when he called us and said we need to go back to the oncologist because it, um, the bone cyst had grown two and a half centimeters in those two months. And so they did an open biopsy and that is when it came back positive for Ewing sarcoma. Well. We, we've had it twice, because Joel's dad had cancer in 2014, and I can remember his words exactly. It's just sort of like you have an out-of-body experience when someone tells you one of your loved ones has cancer. For me, it's very hard to feel this. <laughs> I told my, my parents, I was like, I told my dad especially, I was like, you've got to stop making the sad dog face and start like smiling. Like, I'm going to need y'all's help to fight. I can't do this alone. Um, I don't, I said, I don't want any crying. She gets mad at her daddy sometimes because <laughs> he cried, but then, then he also, he'll, he'll just look at her and she'll tell me, she tells him, are you, I'm not an alien, I'm still Jillian. <laughs> yeah. Why are you looking at me like that? You know, and I know why he's looking at her like that, because it's just you want to savor every moment you have with him. Wait, are we all doing that one time? Apparently oh, have. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't look at the camera. Oh. <laughs> I could have just had the tumor taken out by salvaging the limb, but from research I had done and people I had met, there was a higher relapse rate, and that's not what I wanted, so I opted just to have the tumor removed, and I wanted the best way of life that I could get with doing that, so I chose rotation plasty. She's always had nicknames of being jumpy and sparky and, and since she was a small child and the other options weren't going to give her that, that, that even chance to do it. Right here is where my doctors um, put me back together. Uh, my tumor was in my distal femur and so they removed um, 36 centimeters of the middle portion of my leg, rotated my bottom half 180 degrees and reattached my tibia to my femur. So. My prosthetic, when it slides on my foot and a strap comes over my um, heel and I just move my foot back and forth like if it were bending and straightening like a knee. My foot is still very ticklish and I think my grandma thinks it's like fun to come tickle it. I'm like, no, 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 it's not that fun. <laughs> Growing up, Gillian was always an enthusiastic volleyball player and even competed in beauty pageants. Hey, hey, hey. hey girl. I competed for Miss Texas Teen when I was back in high school, and uh, I loved it. Oh, I have a lot of end goals. Um, I guess my biggest one that I'm reaching for right now is to play Paralympic volleyball. The thing is, I want to compete again for Miss Texas, so got to get my body back in shape to where it needs to be for that. <laughs> My face might be purple. <laughs> That's a good thing. So good. Push. Burn. Burn. Yeah. It's comfortable for you to sit like with your leg up. I don't know if it's because like normally you, like girls sit with both knees up, but I don't have the knees, so I just yep. <laughs> the foot goes in the air. It. Yeah, I hold it sometimes. And, um, <laughs> 
it, it's like I talk with my hands a lot and it talks with me, like <laughs> moves when I'm trying to talk to someone. So I've had to make sure it stays down when I do talk to people so I don't make them nervous. <laughs> Not that way with me. <laughs> she's a firecracker, she's out there. We work a lot on balance. Um, it's important to me that she understands her body the way it is now and uh, she um, I want her not to be afraid to fall I want her to be able to save herself and um, Just be confident in all her movements, especially going back to being an athlete. So that's important life is different for her now, but um, She wants to make a difference being different So the transition from an athletic Texan beauty queen to cancer patient and amputee was a big adjustment for her I guess it's just, it's kind of been eye-opening because I've always had long, pretty hair. I've always been the tall, pretty girl. It's difficult being bald and one-legged. I say that all the time, but um, a lot of people tend to, you know, shy away because they're scared of, why does she look like that? Or why is she bald? Like, is she crazy? And I mean, your hair is going to grow back. Your leg won't, but, <laughs> I mean, it's, you never it know. is. It's, it's modern a, day science. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I've embraced it full-heartedly um, but I know people like other people see it as a freakish thing and are kind of like taken back by it. When I chose rotation plasty in the very beginning I wanted it to be an option or a way of teaching people about bone cancer, um, Ewing sarcoma specifically, and um, about amputation. My motto in life is I want to make a difference by being different and I feel like that's that's what I'm doing with rotation plasty, with cancer, um, with anything I do in life. It'll tell me which way to go. 